And now join me for the Lord's Prayer. you to go with me to a clean slate. And let us make that clean slate the purity of what we call our spiritual home. See with me it shimmering, the sparkling lights reflecting off the diamonds of love. And as you're in this place, ask Spirit, Spirit, what needs to happen here? And ask Spirit, what is it that I need to do to make this beautiful vision come to fruition. In spirit, what do I need to let go of? What is it that holds me back from seeing this beautiful vision. And ask spirit, to be with you, to release whatever it is that you're holding within your heart space that may have anger, doubt, fear, ego. And as 
as we look around this sacred, beautiful place, what infinite possibilities with letting go and letting God and trusting. What infinite possibilities can take place? said, let there be light. So would you agree with me that you've already lived yesterday? <laughs> I guess I got agreement there, huh? <laughs> but here's a question. You know, I always have questions. Did you bring all of yesterday's stuff with you today? Or did you let it die in your sleep? If you let it die in your sleep, then this could be a brand new day, allowing you to have a fresh new start and a new perspective. In the Jewish tradition, the rabbis say that sleep is a mini death. And every time you open your eyes, oh, you can start fresh with gratitude and for life restored. So is your life restored today from whatever it was yesterday? So I ask you again, did you bring all of yesterday's stuff with you today, or did you let it die in your sleep, giving you a brand new day, allowing you to have a fresh new start? Now, I found this beautiful prayer called the morning prayer. And sometimes uh, when I'm writing uh, or thinking about talks, I'll just go to, and I'll probably say this, from the next 10 years when I'm here. But I just go and I look at all the books. Those of you that have been in my house know that there's tons of books. And I just kind of look at them and look at them and think and just, and all of a sudden my hand will just reach for something and I'll open to a page and it, just what I wanted. And in The Poems of Power by Ella Wheeler Wick, Wilcox, she has this beautiful saying or verse called morning prayer. I'd like to share it with you. It said, let me today do something that shall take a little sadness from the world's vast store, and may I be so favored as to make it. Oh, joy, too scanty, some a little more. Let me not hurt by any selfish deed or thoughtless word, the heart of foe or friend, nor would I pass unseeing worthy need or sin by silence when I should defend. However meager be my worldly wealth, let me give something that shall aid my kind, a word of courage, a thought of health. Dropped as I pass from troubled hearts to find, let me tonight look back across the span, twixt dawn and dark, and to my consciousness say, because of some good act to beast or man, the world is better that I live today. And I think that that sums it all up. It says that we're not perfect and things happen. But as we begin to release and let them go and understand that there's still always a, one more ounce of goodness and one more way that we can help, be kind, be, a smile, love, letting go of that which is really not in the realm of namaste. You know, namaste, the God within me recognizes and loves the God within you. Namaste. And we know what that means. But are we honoring that? Are we actually, when we're saying it, meaning it? Are we looking at individuals on the street, the homeless? And can you namaste? Is it real? We speak about love all the time. And we say, I love you, and I love you. And there's so many different forms of love. But the love that comes from within a spiritual community, it is saying, namaste, I love you. I love your being. I love your right to be here. I respect who and what you are. 
I love the joy that you bring into my life. I love the gifts that you give to me. And I love the fact that I am able to then give back to you the gifts of who and what I am. So I'm asking you today, could it not be that we could have a new goal for our life? that we don't live the exact same day again today as we did yesterday. Just saying. It's a possibility, right? Many aspects of the past are comfortable, and they're familiar, and you want to hold on to them. But here's what happens when you hold on too tightly. Nothing can come in. There has to be an openness to let something flow to you, through you. God, in me, as me, is me. My prayer every morning in my office is, God, in me, as me, is me, speak through me. It is not I, but the Father who does the work. When we hold on so tightly, we leave no room for newness, peace, forgiveness, acceptance, you know, life offers us three C's, C's as in capital C, choice, chance, and change. Would you agree with that? Choice, chance, and change. So life says that you must make a choice. You have to make choices to take a chance if you want anything in life to change. Choice, chance, change. So in life, Nothing ever great is accomplished when you stay in your comfort zone. And believe me, I know what it's like to step out of your comfort zone. It doesn't feel good. But it's a risk that we take. And here's what Carolyn May says about this, and I love this. Always go with the choice that scares you the most because that is the one that's going to help you grow. That's the one. So today, bringing fresh possibilities, then let's open up and explore what they are. Challenge yourself. I'm challenging myself every day to be a better person, to be a kinder person, to be more sensitive, to listen more. And that's all each of us can do, is to get up and say, Lord, God, Spirit, infinite intelligence, that whichever you call that which is your creator, Today, how do I be a kinder, nicer, softer person? How do I really say namaste? The divine in me recognizes and loves the divine in you. How do I say that? Challenge yourself for new substance, experience, and richness to your life. Remind yourself that it's a unique day, and we have a chance to be unique I want to be a uniqueness. I used to want to be an Aubrey Linus, but now I want to be a uniqueness. Do you want to be a uniqueness? Do you want to be a new individual person that stands up and people go, whoa, what happened? God, you're blossoming. You're blooming. Life is good. And it doesn't mean that you let go or abandon things and rituals that sustain your life. It's important to maintain continuity and goodness but always be willing, at least, to let something new in. You see, life is a reflex of our mental state. Does that make sense to you? So whatever, wherever we are, that is the reflex that goes out into the universe. And as far as you're concerned, the character that the things will show up as will be the character that you impress upon it. So what is showing up today? Is anger showing up? Is love showing up? Is regret showing up? Is joy showing up? So whatever you show up with then, that is reflected out. And it's important that we understand we are the ones that are impressing that character, that emotion out to the world. And what do we want to impress out there with? Love? Hate? Greed? Anger? What must I let go of? So what in your heart space when you were in meditation today, what must I let go of? What is in my heart space? Is my heart overflowing with joy? Or is my heart all confused? Is my heart angry? Am I not even connecting with my heart? Am I all in my head? 
this happened and I'm not letting go of it and that's the way it is and I'm done. Is that where we are? I don't think so. Not in new thought, not in unity, no way. I say no way. Within this thing we call humanity is our humanness. And we struggle with that and I understand that. But this is called a way of life. And I say no, the way of life isn't to struggle, it's for mankind to understand him or herself. It's time for us to just look in the mirror and say, what the hell am I doing anyhow? <laughs> Sorry, not supposed to curse in church. Oh, well, I did. But do you understand what I'm saying? When we let ourselves get so caught up in ourself, we lose sight of the fact that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We're not human beings waiting to get spiritual. We were born spiritual. And in that place of confusion lies the temporary loss of our heart space. See, Jesus came to earth to make mankind free from limited thinking and wrong thinking. And he wanted his children to know as they think in their heart, so they are. What are you thinking in your heart? For this community, for your families, for our world? Is it not the place of deep feeling, your heart where your subconscious is, past memories, the place that holds doubts and fears from yesterday? It's so important that we understand because if you not healed what hurt you years ago or yesterday, then you're gonna bring that forth to the table in every single thing you do. You know, there are triggers in my life that will, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, how do I have the right to even be here? We all have those triggers in what we do in our lives. Some of us more, some of us less. You know, my life used to be, you know, all of these valleys and then a little peak and then all these valleys and a little peak. And now my life is all these peaks and a little valley and all these peaks. We all do that. That is our spiritual path. The heart is like this big open vat, and it catches everything that passes by it. It's being refilled with whatever you allow to come to surface mind. It is what qualifies and determines your actions and your reactions. How about our reactions are, well, that's a good point. I never thought about that. Let me see it this way. Let me see it that way. Let me look at it from a different perspective. There comes a time when we have to let our hearts empty and be open to the truth. And that's when healing and transformation takes place. Feel your heart open. Know there's room in there for you. In your heart space is where you live. You know, some days you just have to learn how to dance in the rain. And what I was thinking about this morning was I wish I had the courage, and maybe when I'm here a year or two longer, just to say, everybody go up, get out, go outside, and start dancing in the rain and laugh. Let us laugh. Let us enjoy life. It is too serious. There's all that stuff going on out there, all that CNN stuff and all that Fox News stuff, and it's too much. Can everybody just shake your hands. Come on. Shake your hands. Shake your hands. Let it go. Um, we're done. We're done. We're done. Feel better? Feel better. Come on. You're supposed to say yes. <laughs> okay. We have to speak from our hearts and remember that we're all in this together. We're all in this together. There's so much around us that we don't see. There's so much that we assume, so much. So many times people hurt us who we truly like that we didn't even have a clue they're thinking these things about us. And all of a sudden they say, this is what I'm thinking. And you go, where did that come from? Why? How did that happen? This is not who I thought you were. This is not the person I knew. Sometimes we hurt people's hearts. We don't even know it, and that's the saddest part. We keep saying that it's our perspective, and here's what I finally decided about our perspective. 
Get over it. What about thinking about the other person's perspective? What about them? What about how they're feeling? My perspective is, this is what I saw, this is what I heard, this is what I feel. But what about their perspective? What about his perspective? What about Cheryl's perspective? Are we thinking about the other person? And that's where we get caught up, where we forget to do that. It's not just our perspective anymore, at least not in my world. I want to tell you a little story about that. All right, God. <laughs> that's God's perspective. <laughs> His heart is beating. Her heart is beating. <laughs> Thank you so much. So oh, perfect, perfect. So listen to this story. So an elderly woman boarded a train, as she usually did every day, and after a few stops, she noticed a father and his adult son, who looked like he was about 20, board the train. They took seats right across from the aisle from then, and soon the son started talking so loudly to his father, telling him about clouds he saw outside and buildings and trees, and the train was passing by, and the father listened to him nodding so happily, so encouraged by him. And after a while, the little elderly woman got annoyed by the loud man and the way he was speaking and said to the father, excuse me, sir, but have you considered taking him to a special doctor? Now, the father could have gotten angry or annoyed, but listen to what he said and listen to what he did. The father smiled at her and replied, actually, we're just coming back from the doctor. You see... My son has been blind since birth, and this is the first day he's ever been able to see. See, we don't look around us. We don't take the time before we make a judgment call, before we get nasty, before, you know, sometimes you get a stop sign and someone goes through and it's like, it wasn't your turn. So what? <laughs> so what? Just be careful at these stop signs and watch the bikers. They really don't stop. But, but the story reminds us that we can't take everything for granted and never assume we know someone else's story. You don't know my story. It's a long one. We don't have time today. <laughs> but we all have stories and life experiences, and they, we bring them wherever we go. And life doesn't get better by chance alone. It gets better by change. And here is the truth about change. Some people will not go with you, and that just has to be okay. It's just the way it is. We cannot keep putting new wine in old bottles. There's a point where newness and freshness of life must come forth, a cleansing of the mind, the body, heart, soul, we were just talking about that with Jules today. Does the whole system back there need to be cleaned or dusted or vacuumed? Because some days it works and some days it doesn't. Revelation says, see, I make all things new. Life opens doors and windows to newness. And this is where we move forward. Spend no more time asking, why are doors not opening for me? My life is just one closed door after another. Ask instead, why are you resisting walking through a new door? You know what? You can't, absolutely cannot change what's going on in your life until you change what's going on within you. Change is a law of life, like paths are anything but straight. I don't know if any of you in here that have this straight, perfect, wonderful path. So is there anyone in here that can do that? No. What's important, I believe, in this moment right here is what are we choosing to think and believe right now? These thoughts and words will create your future. Your thoughts form the experience of tomorrow, next week, and next year. So I ask you, I challenge you all this week, to think of two words, namaste, the divine in me recognizes and loves the divine in you. When you say that, are you pausing enough to embody that? And the other word is change. What 
do I feel about it? Why do I resist it? Why does it scare me? And allow yourself to work with that this week. And know that within your heart, there is a truth. That's where God, love, intelligence, wisdom, joy, beauty lie. So I challenge you. I challenge you to know that when I say I love you, it means I love the spiritual community. I love this new thought teaching. I love being here. I love you and thank you.